Hello and welcome to Pony Express How To Video Series. Today's demonstration will be discussing the use of the Wi Fi application on the Pone Pad. To begin, you'll need your TP Link adapter. Uh, you'll plug that into the bottom of your Pone Pad using your OTG cable. Next, you'll launch uh, your Wi Fi application found in the Wireless Tools folder. Now, when you launch the Wi Fi application, which is considered the set it and forget it of uh, wireless pen testing apps, when you launch Wi Fi, you'll be given the opportunity to select the, the adapter for use. The TP-Link adapter uh, that we provide with the Pwn Pad supports packet injection. It utilizes the Arthurus chipset. It is listed as adapter number 1, WLAN 1. The adapter identified for reference as WLAN 0, uh, that's the onboard wireless adapter the next, to the Nexus 7 device itself. Although it is possible that you could use that adapter uh, with the Wi-Fi application, we wouldn't recommend it because of the lack of packet injection support. So uh, with the use of the TP-Link adapter, select adapter number 1, hit enter, and basically that will now put Wi-Fi into a monitor mode state where we'll basically uh, detect access points. The screen will redraw every five seconds or so. You are currently looking at a list of access points in my immediate area. Um, of these access points, there is only one that I have the authority to attack today, and that's the Pony Express Lab access point. You can see here it's running on channel one. The encryption is WPA2. The power, uh, 65, WPS is in fact enabled on that access point, and there's currently one client currently connected to that access point. Um, you also see the information for the other access points as well. Now, had there been an access point running WEP, um, which I hate to say it, I sometimes see that in my use of the Pwn Pad. Um, if you see any access points running WEP, uh, what would happen here is that if I look to try to like, crack the authentication associated with that access point, uh, the Wi-Fi application would run through six different types of attacks, um, trying to generate illicit uh, communication with the access point, acquiring a sufficient volume of packets with the IV frame set, and then what happens is that uh, the cracking of that web authentication uh, would then subsequently occur. Generally, it's every 10,000 packets acquired. In my experience, uh, dependent upon the complexity of the key, uh, the cracking of web can take less than two minutes. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to say that I don't see any uh, access parts running web in my immediate area. However, we do have the Pony Express Lab running WPA2, and that's the one we're going to be attacking today. Um, to do, to, uh, to do that, to begin that process, you need to press the volume down key on the Pwn pad. The volume down key, uh, and then followed with the letter C, is how you would push a control C to the application. Once you push the control C to the application, the screen now gives you the opportunity to select the number of the access point that you're looking to crack. This being access point number one, I select that, I hit enter. And because WPS is enabled on that access point, the reaver attack, um, the pin attack, will be launched against that uh, specific access point. This, in my experience, is generally a method of attack that's going to take about 10 hours. Um, you know, maybe maybe eight hours if you're lucky. Um, I'm not going to be sitting here for the next eight hours. Um, so what I'm going to do is, again, push a control C. And uh, as a result, that's going to allow the Wi-Fi application to move on to the next method of attack against that access point, that being uh, the attempt to acquire the four-way handshake. With uh, WPA and WPA2, um, you know, really, realistically, you're looking to acquire that four-way handshake. Now, once you have that four-way handshake in the form of a capture file, the next step would be uh, to take the, the BSID and then uh, utilize aircrack ng to try to uh, you know to try to discern what that passphrase might be now <clears throat> what you'll find here in a minute and what i'm going to do is i'm going to basically speed up the process of of connecting to that access point i'm basically going to Join, rejoin that access point. Hopefully, up oh, there it is. We just got it. Handshake acquired. Uh, you can see a reference to the capture file, the name of the access point, and the MAC is reflected in the name of the capture file. What you will see is that, by default, Wi-Fi, when run on the Pwn Pad, is not going to um, begin the process of running Aircrack NG for you. Um, instead, what it would require is for you to offload the capture file to a USB stick. Now, there's a good reason why we don't do that by default on the Pwn Pad. Um, it's a very intensive process. If you try to perform 
um, this dictionary attack, you'd kill your battery in four minutes. Uh, you know, you might squeak an extra minute or two out of that. You might get five or six minutes out of it. But suffice to say, it's an intensive process and not something that we would recommend. Instead, what we would recommend at this point in time would be to go to your applications folder and run the captures dump application. With, um, you know, if you plug in a USB stick in the bottom of your, of your phone pad, again, using your OTG cable, um, you can then copy the capture file and a lot of other capture files that have been created, obviously, right directly to that memory stick and then take that memory stick, uh, walk it over to a, a laptop or a desktop or a, a system that is uh, running Kali Linux and then you can just use Aircrack NG on that a uh, more suitable system, a more powerful system. As an example of the use of Aircrack, if I wanted to go that route by using my pwn pad, just to show you briefly the, of the success, what you'd want to do is run Aircrack, and what I'll do is I'll just bring up the last time I ran it. There it is right there. Aircrack-ng-b, followed by the MAC address of the access point, followed by dash w, and then the name or the location of the dictionary file, followed by the name of the capture file. And because the name of the capture file here is Pony Express Lab underscore blah, 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 it's easier for me just to simply type uh, pwn with a wildcard dot cap. When you run the Aircrack NG application, uh, here you can see the success. The key was in fact found in that dictionary file. It's not a very complex key in this particular example, so it's not much of a surprise. It, it took us quickly as it did pass 1234 word is the uh, is the authentication to join this access point at this point you know it'd be up to you to decide what you want to do next uh, utilize the onboard adapter uh, basically switch to the uh, the nexus adapter and um, and connect to the Pony Express Lab access point. Once you connect to the access point with the passphrase learned, you'd then be on that network. And at that point in time, you could then subsequently switch your focus, switch your type of, uh, you know, uh, attack to either information gathering or something else uh, more appropriate. Um, for further information with regards to the use of the Wi-Fi application, I'd like to recommend go, uh, code.google.com slash p slash Wi-Fi. Um, in addition, I'd also like to recommend uh, Aircrack NG, uh, the website www.aircrack-ng.org, further information on the use of Aircrack. Uh, so there you have it, the use of Wi-Fi on the PwnPad. Thanks for watching.